According to Einstein's theories, our universe is on a one-way street into darkness. It started with the first moment in time, the Big Bang, has been expanding ever since and will just continue to fade away over the next hundreds of billions of years. If you find that somewhat depressing, you're not alone. Physicists have tried to come up with alternatives, theories in which the Big Bang can repeat. These are called cyclic models or bounce models, and the most famous one comes from Nobel Prize winner Roger Penrose. But, well, a physicist now claims that he's ruled them all out. The math just doesn't work, he says. Singularities are unavoidable. That'd be quite something. So let's have a look. The new paper comes from Rafael Busso at the University of California in Berkeley. He told New Scientist in no unclear terms that he thinks his work categorically rules out cyclic universes and that, in his view, his work proves that the singularity at the Big Bang is unavoidable. That would not just be depressing somehow, it would be the most remarkable progress, because cyclic models and bounce models have recently seen somewhat of a revival since observations indicate that dark energy might be weakening over time. If that result holds up and dark energy indeed weakens, then that makes it possible for our universe to re collapse and potentially bounce into a new beginning. But well, if Busso is correct, then we've all been fooling ourselves about this. So what exactly did he do? Busso builds on a singularity theorem from Roger Penrose, but updates it for a universe filled with quantum fields. To give you an idea for what the problem is, imagine you have an expanding universe. As the universe expands, light has more and more space to travel in. But now that expanding universe begins to contract. The light has less space to go and it's squeezed back into smaller regions. If you keep contracting the universe, eventually there'll be regions where the light won't be able to ever get out. But this is what it means for a region to have an event horizon, just like a black hole. And this is where the singularity theorem comes to bite, because that says that once you have a horizon, you must get a singularity. No bounce, no cycles but infinite density and the end of time. Well, physicists have said, but quantum something happens and that prevents the singularity and then we can bounce and cycle. Something quantum will fix it also does wonders for a lot of startups. But Busso now came up with a new argument for why that doesn't work. He shows that whenever entropy increases, the singularity must still occur. Or to put it differently, to get rid of the singularity, you'd have to somehow get entropy to decrease, which you can't. I guess this is why he's so confident, because betting against the second law of thermodynamics, which says that entropy can't decrease, is a bad idea. That said, his proof has some caveats. One is that he doesn't actually use the second law of thermodynamics, but a generalized version that's been adapted to general relativity, and that includes gravitational entropy. Problem is, we don't actually know what gravitational entropy is. It makes sense, though, that it should be added to the second law, so it's not a point that I personally find controversial. More importantly, Busso's result is only valid so long as you can still speak of geometry in the first place. If the classical geometric description of space goes out of the window, then there's nothing you can say about the bounce. This means you can still wave your arms and yell quantum something to make the bounce happen but now you have to wave harder. Even more importantly, I don't think Busso's argument applies to Penrose's cyclic conformal cosmology. This is because the point of Penrose's model is that at the end of the cycle, the gravitational entropy gets erased and the universe starts over anew. So that model just doesn't fulfill the assumptions of Busso's proof. This means I think the author is somewhat overstating his case when he says that it categorically rules out cyclic models. On my bullshit meter, I give the interpretation a 10 out of 10 because I think it's just wrong, but I give the paper a 1 out of 10 because I believe it's technically correct. If this paper turns out to be wrong, 
We'll find out in a few trillion years, so just hang tight. I used to get a lot of scam calls. I found out that this happened because my phone number had leaked from some websites I must have once signed up to. I now have a new phone number and I'm signed up to Incogni to prevent that from happening again. You see, each time you open a website, it'll try to collect data about who you are and where you are and what other websites you've visited. If you then sign up for a website and fill in your personal details, they can and often do make money by selling your private information to data brokers. Most countries have laws against that and you can ask for your data to be removed, but doing this takes up a lot of time. Incogni automates the process of getting you out of those databases. You sign up and they'll contact the big sinners, request that your personal details be removed, and they'll keep on doing that. And if you want, send you updates about the progress they're making. I'm glad there's now a simple solution to stop unfriendly people doing nasty things with my personal details. Incogni is super easy to use. You sign up, give them the information they should look for, and they go to work, like within a minute, basically. It's really solved a problem for me, and maybe it'll help you too. If you use our link Zabina or the custom link in the info below, you'll get 60% off of Incogni. That's an amazing deal, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.